Hey everyone, Andrew Gould here. We're gonna talk about a style of music that I really enjoy um, called fusion. We'll be checking out three varying etudes today, all from slightly different styles within the fusion umbrella. These are all from my newest release with Jazz Lesson videos entitled 19 Fusion Etudes. And if you want $5 off, you can use the code AG5 and the link will be in the description below. So let's check out this first etude. Okay, so this first one is on the tune Cantaloupe Island, and really what I tried to do here was use some motivic development in the first few bars, first four bars, really get that from the melody. So we know that the melody is... And that's why I really wanted to start the first motif literally with almost that same idea, but just displaced a little bit rhythmically. And then... I kind of use that as my springboard or my jump off point to then continue a phrase in the second bar. And then I went back to that original motif of again in bar three, but slightly varied and then had another answer phrase in the fourth bar. So I'm using these motifs as a way to kind of always come back to something that's familiar to the listener, but then expand on the idea and have it kind of evolve over time, which takes me through the chord changes. And one really cool thing about this tune, and a lot of tunes from the fusion era, is that there are chords that last for longer than one bar. In this case, each chord lasts for four bars. So that gives us more time to really expand and develop our ideas like this. Now in bar five, our chord changes quality, we have a dominant 7 sharp 11 chord, and so now instead of using more pentatonic based ideas like I did in the first four bars, I'm kind of getting into another scale called the Lydian dominant scale, which is basically just like Mixolydian, except instead of the regular fourth degree, we have the sharp fourth or the sharp 11th present in the scale. And that's when you get sounds like... In bar four of this chord, really bar eight of the tune, I'm basically walking up that scale. That's the sound of Lydian dominant that I really wanted to make present in some of my ideas and the motifs that I carry through this section. And then basically for the last eight bars, I'm using ideas all present within the minor pentatonic of that chord. So when we get back to our B minor 11 here, all completely within the pentatonic scale and we're developing ideas from there. And same thing holds true when we get into the last four bars too, all ideas from the D pentatonic scale. All that stuff is completely in the pentatonic scale and it really fits well and works well over a tune like this. So to recap, two of the ideas that we're using in this etude are motivic development and the use of pentatonics and other diatonic scales throughout the chords. And really these ideas are things that Herbie would use himself when he played and he would really take his time and develop using some more simple ideas and make those his springboard into more complex things too. So in our next etude, we're going to be looking at Spain by Chick Corea. And one of the cool things about this tune is that Chick really uses a lot of more altered harmony in just how he gets from one chord to the next. And also the qualities of the chords are, they're not just like a regular major chord or a regular minor chord all the time. There is just like a little alteration here or there. And he has some altered dominant chords. And a lot of the lines that we're using here really reflect these qualities of chords. And they also use more chromaticism to get from one chord to the next, so we'll dig into that a little more. So getting into this etude, right even in this first bar, we have this E major 7 sharp 11 chord, and we're going from D sharp, 
C sharp, B, and landing right on that sharp 11 on beat 3. From there, we're actually using some chromaticism, some chromatic passing tones, walking our way all the way down to the next chord tone, which is the F sharp, the ninth, a really colorful note in this key, in this chord, right on beat one of the next bar. And this chromaticism, and especially over some slightly less common or more altered chords like this E major 7 sharp 11, these sounds are all very characteristic of Chick Corea and, and things that he would play both in his solos and also use in his compositions too. As we get into the next chord, on bar 5 here we have our E flat 7 flat 13. Again, another slightly altered chord that comes after our E major 7 sharp 11. And these two chords kind of coming in succession, it's not really something you see in functional harmony necessarily. They sound great one after another because they're two really colorful sounds and there is a great melody that's being reflected by them as we progress through the harmony. But it's something that is also kind of more characteristic of the fusion era, these chord progressions that don't always have to be completely functional in the harmonic sense. So if you check out bars 7 and 8 here over the E flat 7, flat 13, we really tried to use some notes, specifically that flat 13, to delineate that sound because that's what separates it from being just a regular dominant chord is the presence of that flat 13, that B natural there. And so these lines really reflect that and then, of course, use that tension to carry into our next chord. Now jumping down to another spot that I think is very characteristic of the fusion era and these more colorful more dissonant harmonies is what we get into on the B-flat 7 altered here, where we're really using an idea, and this ascending line that basically is just all within the B-flat altered scale to help carry our line through and then resolve into the E-flat 7 flat 13, which we see yet again here, and try to outline clearly as we use this tension to resolve finally into our A-flat 7. This all basically functions as a long 2-5. We have a B-flat 7 altered, and then an E-flat 7 flat 13. But again, not completely normal because our 2 chord, in this case, if we analyze this as all being within A-flat minor, our 2 chord is an altered chord. It's not a minor chord like we're used to seeing. And again, our 5 chord has a slightly different color to it with that flat 13 added. And these lines really try to reflect these specific sounds through them, which I think is very colorful and very unique. So a few key points on this tune are the use of chromaticism in the lines, and then also the altered harmony, non-functional harmony, things that are a little bit different color-wise, don't always lead to where they're expected. Very cool aspects about Chick's writing and about some broader fusion ideas too. So for our last etude, we're looking at Strap Hanging, as played by the Brecker Brothers. And this tune, very much like Spain, has some non-functional harmony, also some slash chords, which use a one chord over another specific bass note, often to have tension or just apply a new color, a foreign idea, a foreign sound to the chord progression. And we also get into some ideas that Brecker likes to use over the dominant chords, like more half whole diminished lines, things like that. So let's dig into some of these now. So even in our first few bars here, right, we have B minor 11, and then as we get into bar 2, we have a C major sharp 5 over B, and then we get back into B minor 11 in the third measure. And so really we have this constant theme of this B being played in the bass, but as we get into bar 2, we have some new notes, some out notes kind of being introduced in the harmony to kind of get us from one place, apply some tension, and then resolve again. Specifically we have a C in the chord, we have a G sharp in the chord, 
And this is all happening over a common bass note. And this is really something that you also hear in a lot of fusion tunes, this idea of like a, a bass pedal where all of a sudden we start hearing all these outlines and ideas. Sometimes the chord, like in this case, reflects that. Sometimes just the soloist is implying that. Things that Brecker, at both Michael and Randy, would do in their solos all the time. So over some of these five chords, one sound that we get into is the use of half hold diminished over a dominant chord, a sound that both Michael and Randy would use a lot. And they wouldn't always be completely patternistic, like you hear a lot of people playing diminished patterns, which can be great, but Brecker, both Michael and Randy, they'll get really intervolic and play specific shapes, just ideas within the scale that they hear to apply tension and then resolve in a really, really clear way. All these ideas are completely within the half hold diminished scale, but they're not completely patternistic. They're just lines within that scale. <laughs> All within the half hold diminished scale, except for the last beat there, where we introduce some chromatic passing tones that lead us right into the C sharp, the ninth of our B minor. And again, at the very last bar of this, we play. Same exact thing, all completely within half hold diminished, but a little more intervallic and not something that you normally would associate with the diminished sound, but it's all in there. And then again, on beat four, we have one chromatic passing tone leading into the 13th, that G sharp, which is our resolution note over the B minor seven. So I hope you guys enjoyed checking out these etudes with me today. I had a lot of fun working on this stuff and, and talking about it with you. So if you want to dive more deeply into this material, you can use the code AG5 for $5 off my newest release with Jazz Lesson videos called 19 Fusion Etudes. Hit the like, subscribe button, and feel free to leave a comment below if there's anything that you want us specifically to cover in one of our upcoming videos. See you guys next time.